Today is June the 11th. What might happen if we were united? Let's find out together as we study Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians seems to be a book for Paul in which he focuses on the concept of unity. He continues talking about unity in Ephesians chapter 4. Here he's not talking so much about the unity between Jew and Greek. He's simply talking about the unity between us as brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, uh, first of all, um, Verse 3, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And then he says, for there's one body. There's one Spirit, just if you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, who's over all and in all and living through all. Here Paul says, God created us to be one. Look at all of the things in which we are one. One Lord, one body, one baptism, one faith. Paul goes on, he quotes an Old Testament passage. He says, he ascended to the heights and led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. And then he exegetes that passage saying, this who ascended must be Christ who first descended from heaven to our world. And then he gave gifts to his people. The gifts that he gave in verse 11 are leaders in the church. These are the gifts Christ gave to the church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Then he goes on and he begins to list what happens when the church has one body, one faith, one baptism, one Lord. He says, verse 12, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do this work, to build up the church, the body of Christ. The church, when it comes together in unity, is prepared for the task of the ministry. Starting in verse 13, listen to the unity language that takes place. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we'll be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. We'll no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We'll not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Instead, we'll speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who's the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now from verses 13 to 16, what Paul says is we're brought to unity. He says secondly that in that unity we find maturity. Then in verse 14, he says, we discover stability. Verse 15, we grow more and more like Christ. Verse 16, the whole body fits together and helps the other parts grow. And the whole passage ends with love. The whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. What might happen if we were to be one as a body? Individual maturity 
stability, growth, love. We become more like Christ. We find the unity of the faith. If we were to become one, amazing things can happen. They happen because we stop living as individuals and we start living as part of a body, part of a team. We come together, support each other, help each other. Maturity takes place. <laughs> My question for you today, how do you think unity could help you grow? What do you need to do about that? Please like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. We'll see you on Sunday morning when we'll be talking about hospitality.